Oops, let's try it again. You didn't need to look at a chair. Hey, how you doing? It's Lee. It's early. It's here. How early is it? It's a good question. It's so early that my hotel will not give me coffee yet. That's pretty early. It's pretty early. Hey, so retweet this. If you're not following me on Periscope, follow me. Why am I up early? Number one, I'm going to be on the radio. I'm going to be on Breitbart News Radio in about 10 minutes. Uh, but I want to talk to you about the state of the election right now. And if you're a Donald Trump supporter, especially, you're going to want to retweet this. In fact, if you're a Trump supporter, retweet this right now. I want to talk about the state of the race with everybody. To a certain extent, people are, are, are having a uh, sky is falling moment. People are having can, oops, that was my fault, sorry. <clears throat> Again, you don't need to look at that chair. There's nothing wrong with the chair, but you don't need to look at it. So people are having a sky is falling moment right now. And I want to talk about the state of the race. I want to talk about how to win the race right now. And I want to talk about what you can tell your friends. And I'm going to do it quickly because i got to be on the radio in literally 14 minutes. So there you go. <clears throat> Obamacare is everything right now, as my title said, so that won't shock you. Uh, let me explain why and explain what I think the Trump campaign could do and should do right now. So let's tie a few things in. First off, if you have not seen the Michael Moore Why Trump Will Win video, it's about four minutes long, you should really watch it. If you don't want to, if like the idea of clicking on something and making yourself watch Michael Moore seems uh, you, you can't, uh, ooh, you, you just can't do it. I understand that. I had the same reaction for about 24 hours. Go watch it. He's on to something, right? He's on to something. And he's not a Trump supporter, so he's not trying to be on to something. And I'm sure, like my friend Christina said, I'm sure it's out of context and stuff like that. But he's on to something. This goes back to what I said last night. If you watch my uh, last Periscope that I did, someone asked me why they should vote for Trump. And I answered them. I didn't call him a troll. I didn't. I answered them, which is he's the best chance we have to go up against the establishment. What is the establishment? The establishment is a combination of big government and big business. Okay, that's what it is. And so, uh, and big government who's learned how to make money from big business on both sides. That's what it is. The biggest business in the world that is screwing you right now. Is the health insurance industry. It is the single biggest business that is screwing every single one of us. There is no other product. You can name other things where you feel like you might be getting screwed, but there's no other product that has done this. And I want you to think about what the Obamacare plan actually is, okay? I've said this. Now remember, I voted for Obama in 2008. I was on the left. I wrote for Huffington Post. One of the reasons I supported Obama in 2008 is that he was against the individual mandate. So as soon as I saw that he switched on that, he lost a ton of support. Who was in favor of the individual mandate? Hillary Clinton. She was the individual mandate person. Obama argued quite eloquently against the individual mandate. He said, forcing people to buy insurance, retweet this please, people got to hear this, this is really important. He said at the time, and you can look it up, he said at the time that forcing people to buy insurance is like saying, well, we're going to solve homelessness by forcing people to buy homes. Okay? So, the and by the way, the reason they passed Obamacare is the health insurance industry wanted it. Okay? Let's say you're a business owner, right? Let's say your business is you own chicken and waffle restaurants. Let's say that's your business. You, you own chicken and waffle restaurants. That's what you do. If the government could pass a law forcing everybody to buy chicken and waffles, you'd, you would profit mightily, wouldn't you? That'd be a pretty good law for you, for your business, for the chicken and waffle business. That would be great. Oh, look, you have to, and if you, you either buy chicken and waffles weekly, you know, for they, what is it? Chicken and waffles cost at Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, uh, a business I know well. 
the number 13 Carol C. Special, which is one delicious waffle, one succulent piece of chicken, and one delicious waffle. That's what the Carol C. By the way, you look it up. Look up the menu. I'm not joking. That's the Carol C. Special, number 13 at Roscoe's. Why do you think I look like this? Because I know the Roscoe's menu by heart. Uh, it, it's like, I think it's 950, something like that, 750. I forget the last time I was down at Roscoe's, something like that. So here's the thing, right? Now you force everybody to buy waffles. They have to buy waffles. You have to do that. And, well, you know, we're going to spike the price a little bit. You know, we're going to spike the price a little bit. So it's now, it's now 11 bucks. But you have to buy it once a week, but you can afford that. But then, after a couple of years, you go, fuck this, <laughs> whatever. I'm forcing people to buy it at uh, 40 bucks a week for the chicken and waffle. Why not? That's what's happened. That's why health insurance industry premiums have spiked. Because big business, the health insurance industry, and big government colluded. They worked together to screw you, right? They worked together to create a product you had to buy. It's not health care. They didn't buy you any health care. You didn't get any health care. You got health insurance. It's not like they did that. And as people have pointed out, this was really designed to fail. It's doing what it was designed to do. It's designed to make you cry mercy and beg for single payer, which brought to you by the same people who brought you Obamacare? No, no, no. Now, the argument that I'm making, who will this argument uh, affect? Does this argument, is this a Republican argument? Is it a Democrat argument? No, it's a common sense argument. You were screwed by the insurance companies. And the person who was always in favor of this plan or worse was Hillary Clinton. Always in favor of her worse. What's needed is Donald Trump to come in and say, and I hope they can, I hope, I hope they realize this. And the reason this is important is because you can't avoid the Obamacare issue right now. The media has covered it. I watched Jake Tapper. He was on CNN yesterday. And here's the other thing. Even if they don't cover it, you're going to get a letter telling you your premiums are raised by 25% or like, in, like I forget where it was, Arizona like 116 percent what and there's no indication whatsoever and even though we're less than two weeks out from the election if you talk to your friends and say you realize what will happen to you and your premiums do you think Hillary's going to fix this situation she's not going to fix the situation she was always in favor of this situation She's deeply indebted to these people who are screwing you over. So one of the one of the messages, one of the one of the ways that Obama won in two thousand and eight is he convinced people that the big banks, you know, the big banks that Hillary gives speeches to regularly, were screwing them because they had too big to fail and stuff like that. And Bush was in office, and he seemed like, well, he's a Republican, so he's in bed with the banks, right? Well. Guess what? They're all in, you know, they're, yeah, he was. And so are the Republicans. In fact, the Tea Party was a response to Bush as much as it was to this new guy coming along, Obama. It was. And I've taught, I know, I, I, I was writing for Huffington Post at the time. I went to Tea Party rallies to observe, and I expected to be real critical. The Tea Party was right. This is what everybody in the Tea Party was saying would happen with Obamacare. They were right. They were completely right. The crazy Tea Party that the media wanted you to ignore, oh, no, don't listen to them. They're a crazy bunch of racists. Sound familiar? Oh, they were right on Obamacare. This is, what they, this is what they tried to warn you would happen. And this is how you can win the election in the next two weeks. Not by making fun of people, not by doing anything, but get start to talk to people. Now, there's a point here where messaging and stuff like that, where... Uh, the stuff that a guy like Mike Chernovich does, for instance, would be really useful, but you got to stay on message. you got to stay focused, right? There's a point where getting messaging across, doing that right would be useful, but you got to have the right message. This is the right message. This is the right time for the message. This is, I'm looking at it, i got, I got to wrap up here quick. This is the right message. This is the right time for the message. There's one other thing I want to tell you. And I can't remember what it was, so let me think for a minute. Hang on.
one of the only benefits of being old and having this beard is that I can do this and appear to be deep in thought. So hang on. I'm actually thinking. I swear to God, I'm actually thinking. And I can't remember what it is. But I tried. I'm old and pre-caffeinated. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go do the radio. I'm going to go drink some more of my bottled water. Since I, don't, since I can't get a coffee yet. What is that? What, you can't get a coffee? At 6.30 in the morning? Because they don't open until 6.30 or something? Open at 6. What are you doing? This is also a... a what are you doing? That's all. So anyway, stick to the knitting. Focus on Obamacare. Make your argument polite, cogent, and speak to people. We're all getting screwed by big insurance companies. Oh, I know what I wanted to say, and I don't have enough time to say it. I'll try to do it quickly. Because, okay, literally, I'll try to do this in one minute. Here we go. Ready? I'm going to say something to the Republicans. This is where your fealty to the Constitution, oh, the Constitution, the Constitution, oh, the Constitution, has screwed you over. Let me point out the why, okay? Whenever health care comes up, Republicans have not had a cogent answer. They have not had a cogent answer. The answer has kind of been, so what are you going to replace Obamacare with? And the answer is kind of like, uh, freedom. Okay, so here's the problem with that. It gives you a goal. Yes, the goal is freedom. I agree. The goal is more competition. That's the goal. But it doesn't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. This is where a pragmatic guy like Donald Trump makes all the difference in the world. Trump needs to come in and say, basically, I'm going to make sure you don't get screwed. I'm going to make sure the insurance companies don't try to hold you hostage. I'm going to make sure they don't try to scare you by saying, oh, we're going to cut off pre-existing conditions. Trump needs to come in and go, oh, no, you're not. You're not going to cut off pre-existing conditions. That's not going to happen. We're going to negotiate what happens after Obamacare. We're going to get more competition. We're going to get competition between the states. We're going to allow, we're going to get rid of the individual mandate so people aren't forced to buy insurance. And the insurance companies are going to say, because they understand how to negotiate, oh, well, hey, we're going to have to lose pre-existing conditions then, and rates are going to spike. And this is where you need a guy like Trump to come in and go, oh, no, 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 screw you, insurance companies. You're going to sit there, you're going to negotiate, you're not going to hold anybody hostage. Right now, what's needed right now is people need to know that they're not going to get screwed by the insurance companies while they're trying to desperately keep Obamacare. And, and that's where Republicans have failed, because they want to be like, oh, well, we, constitutionally, we shouldn't be providing. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree you shouldn't be. But that doesn't tell people. See, health care is an immediate need, right? Health care is something people immediately need to know. They need to know, where am I going to get my medicine? How is that going to work? And so Trump could, in fact, he's the kind of guy who could, in fact, go in and twist some arms because the insurance companies need their flipping arms twisted behind their back and held up so their back of their palm is touching their neck. That's what they need. They've screwed us all. They've screwed this company. They've done it with politicians like Barack Obama and like Hillary Clinton. That's what's happened. So anyway, now i got to go to the radio. Love you guys. Hey, pass this one around. Retweet this one. If you disagree with me, talk to me on Twitter. But I love you guys. Bye.